Hey everyone, this is Cody, and today on Astro Blender, we're going to be looking at some telescope basics, specifically how to connect your Celestron telescope mount and hand controller to your computer and make sure everything is communicating properly. So I'm going to show you what cords you need, what drivers you need, uh, what programs that you need to install for updates and make sure everything is running smoothly. So that's the topic of today's video. Now there will be a part two as well. Part two will focus on the ASCOM system, what it is and, and why it's useful, and then I'll show you how to download and install it as well. So with that being said, let's go ahead and jump into part one here. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to look at is what cable you need to connect your telescope mount and your hand controller to a computer. Now this is the Celestron Nexstar SE mount, it has the motor control board, hand controller, gears, everything just in one nice compact uh, piece here, so that's why I'm using this to demonstrate today. So if I pull off the hand controller, the first thing you're going to notice on the bottom of the hand controller is there's a female USB mini B connector. So this is what you're going to, to use to connect the computer and uh, we'll now look at the cable that you need to do this. Alright, so the cable that you need to connect your hand controller to your computer is a type A to type mini B USB cable. Now this is a very common cable, just about any retailer that sells electronics will carry these. Uh, if not, you could always jump online, for example, if I go to Amazon here, and if you search for uh, a type A to mini B USB cable, it will pull up some results for you. So yeah, really common cable. Now I'm going to make an interjection. If you are using a Celestron hand controller that was manufactured prior to 2016, say for example the version 5 hand controller, that's going to connect to your computer using the RS-232 serial cable. So if you want to connect to that older hand controller and update your firmware, I've actually made a video on how to do that using the Celestron Firmware Manager, and I'll include a link to that video in the description if you want to check it out. So now what we're going to do is we're actually going to download and install the driver that you need to get your telescope mount, hand controller, everything talking to the computer. And then once we're done with that, then we'll actually connect the cable to the hand controller. For your convenience, I've included the links to the prolific driver that you'll need in this notepad. So if you're using Windows 10, you'll want to use this link. If you're using an Apple Mac, you'll want to use this link. And I'll put these in the description as well so that those are available. Uh, but I'm using Windows 10, so I'm going to go ahead and copy this, uh, minimize this, and open up my preferred browser. So I use Mozilla Firefox. Obviously, use whatever you want. So I'm just going to wait for this to load up here. Okay. So I'm going to paste that link. Okay, so here it is. So this is the driver that you need to get your computer to recognize your telescope mount hand controller and vice versa. So just click here, save file. And then up here, it's just about done. Okay, there we go. Now you could just click on this, but I like to know where my file is located. So I like to click on the folder and and open it up this way. Uh, so that is a, a zip or a compressed folder. So I'm going to open it. We're going to open this. And then you're going to click on PL23XX driver setup. It's probably going to ask you to extract. Yep. So you're going to extract all. And yep, this is where we want to put the folder. So we're going to extract the files there. And now it's it's brought up the, the folder, so it's no longer in that zip anymore. So this is what we want. So now you're just going to do the same thing, click on it, and click on that same driver setup. And this will uh, prompt you to go through the, the installation process. Okay, so it's preparing. All right, continue installing. That fast. Okay, so the driver is installed. So that's pretty much it there. So I'm just going to click out of this, click out of that.
Okay, so before we start downloading some software from Celestron, we actually need to install Java first. And the reason for that is if you use the Celestron firmware manager, that uses Java. So if you want to update your hand controller or your motor control board, which is usually recommended you keep things up to date, you'll need, you'll need Java. So I'm just gonna go to www.java.com. and go ahead and download Java. Now you can go ahead and, and read through the operating licenses and that sort of thing before you, you start the download if you wish. So I'm just going to download. Again, save file and it's done up here. Now this is an executable, so I'm just going to click on it this time and just run it. Okay, welcome to Java. Again, you can read the updated license agreement if you'd like to. I'm going to go ahead and install it. All right, so Java is now installing, and it really depends on the specs of your machine on how fast this goes or how slow it goes. So I'll just uh, wait for this to finish here. Okay, so Java is successfully installed. So now we're ready to uh, install the download and install the Celestron firmware manager. Um, and at the same time, I'm going to download CPWI as well, which is uh, Celestron Plane Wave Instrument Software, which is really handy. So I'm just going to go to software.celestron.com. Okay, so this is the main Celestron site where you can get software and firmware and, and things like that. So I'm going to go ahead and get uh, CPWI first. It's just really quick, easy download. Now it does have a revision history. So if you wanna know the difference between all the versions, you can look at that. I'm gonna skip that for now, uh, but uh, I'm just gonna download the latest version. Okay, so save file. Just like that, it's done downloading. It's only 16 megabytes in size, really small. And this is also an executable, so I'm just gonna click on it. Okay, welcome to the CPWI setup wizard. Next, this is where I want to save it, yep. Create desktop shortcut, yes. Install, get that installed real quick. Notice registering ASCOM drivers. That's going to be important for part two. So launch CPWI, no, not right now. I'm gonna uncheck that and finish. Now, if I go back to the desktop, there it is. So that was easy. Uh, if I go back into the page here and just click on these little dots, it'll take me back to the main download page. And this is where you're gonna get the Celestron Firmware Manager. And this is the main reason you want to download Java is it runs off of that. So again, there's a firmware revision history, but I'm just gonna download the latest version. So I'm gonna click there save file okay there we go already done i'm going to open the folder where it's located okay so here it is cfm tap that and then there's cfm executable jar file so yep you do need java to run this and then if you click on it you're going to notice that Sometimes it pops up and disappears. And a lot of people have been confused on why that happens sometimes. So I'm gonna show you a nice little way to fix that problem. So uh, we actually don't need the, the web anymore. So I'm gonna go ahead and close that. So find the CFM folder. So here's the CFM folder. I'm actually gonna take this out of my downloads folder. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut this out and I'm just gonna paste it on my desktop. Okay, there we go. So it's no longer in my downloads folder. It's right here on my desktop. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on it, make sure all the files came in okay, so they did. All right, so this is what I'm going to do. I'm gonna right click over here on my desktop. I'm gonna hit new, shortcut. Type the location of the item. Well, I'm just gonna browse. It's in this folder, it's right there. Okay, 
So this is the location of the item. That was easy enough. Now I'm going to hit next. Type a name for this shortcut, CFM. All right. So I just made myself a little CFM shortcut now. Now if I click on it, notice it doesn't just pop up and disappear. It will actually open and run. So that is how you get the Celestron Firmware Manager going. Now in this video, I'm not going to show you how to update the telescope. Uh, I have several videos on how to use firm, uh, the CFM, the Firmware Manager. So if you'd like to, to look in at how you update the telescope itself or the the mount and the hand controller, you can see one of those videos. But that is how you successfully get CFM working on your Windows PC. All right, so with the drivers now installed, now just go ahead and take the USB cable and plug it into the hand controller. I'm just gonna put that back and then take the other end and put it into your computer. And that's a good sound. <laughs> All right, so great, we got the driver installed first and foremost, so your computer can start communicating with your hand controller and your mount. And then we got a lot of the software that we need to. So we got CPWI on the computer. Uh, we installed Java in order to run CFM and got CFM downloaded and installed as well. So you're well on your way to controlling your Celestron telescope with your computer. So for part two, we're going to look more at CPWI and then to get it to run properly, we're going to download and install ASCOM. Now ASCOM is a little bit complex for a lot of beginners, but it's actually really simple and it's really, really cool. So I'm gonna show you how to download and install ASCOM and we're gonna talk a little bit about what it is and how it works. So I apologize if I went a little bit fast. If you need to rewind and, and watch some parts over again, obviously feel free to do that. Uh, and then I guess we'll, uh, we'll see you next time. So thanks so much for watching and clear skies.